Hello, I am Scott Sackett, artist of uh, the comic books Heaven's Rejects and The Black Cricket coming up soon. Um, I have a series of videos about drawing and, and uh, reviewing drawing supplies and drawing books. And so, um, and so I wanted to make a video about sharpening pencils. Uh, if you enjoy this, please take a second to um, subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel. So, uh, so a lot of times you'll read in a book on drawing, they'll talk about sharpening pencils. And occasionally they'll tell you to sharpen a pencil with a knife. Uh, and they, and you don't see it a lot in the newer books, but some of the older books talk about that. And I think part of it is, well, one, it can be dangerous sharpening something with a knife. In fact, let me put a disclaimer here. If you're uncomfortable, uh, holding a knife or if you're, uh, a minor, then maybe this shouldn't be something you should attempt. But if you're an adult and, and, or, or competent and comfortable handling a knife, or a sharp instrument like an X-Acto blade or a razor blade, then this might be something you should consider if you're an artist. Now, of course, anyone can grab a uh, sharpener and sharpen a pencil. And, uh, you know, there are a variety of sharpeners. I have one here, just a typical sharpener, put, the, put it in, do it. And you get a, uh, you get a, a uh, point, something like this. And there may be nothing wrong with that. And, and if that works for you, that's fine. Um, as I've drawn more, I've realized that, that it was, it, it, it's better to have a, a more of a, a pointed uh, point on my pencil. What I'm saying is um, something like this, but maybe even longer, maybe more of an angle. The problem is if you do that with a pencil sharpener, and there are sharpeners that will do that, uh, that one I just showed is adjustable, so you can do that. But if you do that, if you if you do a very sharp point, it, it gets real weak because you've got this one point there, and then it's just this this thin cone. And I've realized the other thing is, if you if you draw a lot of times you'll draw like this, you know, but sometimes you want to shade, so you'll you'll do underhand like this. And if you have a cone on it with a typical, just a, a point, a real slender point, it's, it's not, uh, it's not the best way to do that. So what's better is if you can get your point to be kind of a, a wedge like this. Now that's kind of a long point on there, which is good. You can, you can get a lot of graphite down if you lay it flat, but if you'll see, and I'll try and close in on there, there's, it's, it's not round. It kind of, it, it tapers up and this does a couple things for you. One, it gives you a flat surface you can shade with. Uh, also, the other thing is it makes your point stronger. So instead of coming to a needle point down here where it's thin all the way up, it's kind of wedged and it'll wear evenly. This point on this will stay usable. It'll, it won't change over a long period of drawing. Um, depends on how hard you push. That's the other thing. If you push real hard, this may not be the best uh, solution for you, but something worth trying. Um, and I found that by giving it kind of a, a beveled point that the, the, the point lasts longer. I don't have to sharpen as much and it's a little bit easier for shading and it allows me to kind of move the pencil and get some, get some interesting effects with like line weights and stuff. And so it's something I've been doing it. Now you can do it. I'm going to show you how to do it on a wooden core or a wooden pencil, but you can do it. I do it on, um, it's a little more difficult because you don't have the wood to support it, but I'll do it on lead holder leads. Um, this one's kind of wore down a little bit, but you can see there, I've got a little bit of a spot, a flat spot there. I need to resharpen this one. I was drawing with it last night, but I, I feel like this is a good way to do it. And a lot of older drawing books will recommend using this method, but they don't really, they'll tell you, but the, but it's, 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 it's difficult to follow sometimes. And I've, I've messed with it a lot. And so I've kind of come up with a technique that I thought I would share. So first off, and I've got it, and I would recommend start and practice on a cheaper pencil. This is a cheap drawing pencil. It's a, it's a Musgrave Unigraph. I think I paid like a buck for this maybe at a, at an art store. It's an H. Um, so you'll need a knife. This is the knife that I use a lot. I've had the best results with it. It's a Gerber single, Gerber single bladed knife. 
I have a uh, multi-bladed knife here that I'll use occasionally. I keep in my studio. Just a, it's not a Swiss Army knife, but it's a similar kind of thing. Uh, I've had better luck with the single blade. Just a little bit easier to control. Um, you can use a uh, an exacto if you don't have a pocket knife, um, or you could use a razor blade if you're really daring. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna give this a whirl, and we'll see how this goes. Um, so the trick is, or uh, what I've learned, so, uh, you know, a pencil's hexagonal and you can see this cheap pencil cause you can see the seams in it. Um, so what the trick is to be slow about it and I, I'll do like this. Now you want to hold it. You never want to hold it like this cause you don't want to cut yourself. So you'll hold it like this and I'll, I'll just give it a, a little bit of pressure. See so if you can see that. And I'll do what I'll do, and you're not trying to go very far. Just get, I'll, I'll do one panel, and then on a, on a hexagonal, I'll, I'll skip. So I'll go over here, and I try and get it about the same spot, try and use about the same pressure. And when I'm pushing, I'm pushing a little bit of pressure on the bottom, a little bit of pressure on top, and then I'm using my thumb, my two thumbs, to kind of push it. You're not pushing down, you're just pushing that way. And you see, I got, I just took a little bit out there. So let's see, we'll do this one, so we'll see how this comes out. Again, not a lot of pressure down, a lot of pressure that way, but but firm, not not you know trying to kill it. So see, you can see, I kind of got it. I got it started. That one's a little shallow. I got shallower as I went. So I skip every one. So I'll go to this one. Now this will be easier because I don't have enough wood to to remove. So I'll go now. I'm pushing a little bit. I'm kind of trying to. Your goal is you're trying to get down to the to the uh, to the uh, lead. Now I'm going to take a little bit off there, okay. And and the reason why I skip one, you can see it flaked off. It's cheap. And I've got. You want to do this over a trash can? Typically, I will, but I, I put a piece of cardboard down on my drawing table so I could film it because I couldn't figure out a way to film it and hold it over a trash can at the same time. So again, uh, let's see. Okay, I got this one. Like I said, I do. I I start off and I go. I alternate. Okay. Um, and you can see I kind of got it, it kind of uh, mushroomed out on me at the top. So I'll come in here and then and then what I'll do is I'll just kind of and you don't really worry about this part. I was just trying to get a kind of a semi smooth line down here. And again, at this point, what you're looking for is see, I started to expose the lead. So you kind of want to now like when I get closer, I'm pushing with this finger. And, and controlling it with my knuckles. I think that's why this knife, knife works so good. By the way, you really want to use a knife that's a locking blade. You don't want it to close on you. Um, my other knife is not a locking blade. Um, I think that's why it works better here. I have more control over it because those, that, that thumb or that index finger there is really doing a lot of the control. And it takes a little bit of practice. Um, you can see I'm still kind of, and it's not a, this is not a fast method. Okay, so I've got that exposed right there. So I'm gonna kind of work my way around, and again, I'm trying to just get. I just want to just want to kiss the lead, so to speak. And I'm trying to get down here. Make sure you can see that. And again, I want to be a conal down here. So maybe. I'll, and again, you got. I've I've done. It took me a long time, a lot of practice, um, before I got to where I was comfortable enough to where it's like, hey, I should do a video of this. But you're trying to expose. At this point, you're trimming the wood off. We'll get to sharpening the lead in a second. And I would say you want to do. It depends on how your drawing style. But I'm trying to expose about twice that much, so I'll have to come down. That's that right there is probably decent. And again, this pencil I'm doing is a cheap pencil. Cheaper the pencil, the worse it is, or the harder it is. So maybe what I would start off would be like a decent number two pencil that's that's cheap but not a that, but not cheap wood okay so this is getting there and again just take it slow kind of work your way around be methodical be patient and really pay attention to how hard you're pushing okay so this is this is enough that I can start sharpening the lead I think and you can always go back and trim off more wood if you want to and you can, if you want to, start off with a uh, a pencil that you've ran through a pencil sharpener already. And I'll, I'll do one of those here in a second, kind of show you. 
Okay, now you don't want to ding up the uh, lead too much. Okay, so you're going to use the same thing on the lead. So, but uh, and that you want it, but you want to do. Now we're going to go into the lead. So you're going to be you got to be a little more careful about pressing up because you don't want to break the lead. But you're just you're just scraping it across there, and s hopefully you can see that I'm putting a flat spot on that side. You can see it on the top, and so that's. You, you just want that flat spot. Now, now's where you'll want to experiment. And see, I'm, and this is literally just sc barely scraping. Almost like if you shave with a blade, it's about that much pressure, just scraping it. Okay, so I've got that where it's kind of good on that side. But so you want to decide, do I want to do a four-sided or three-sided? I'll try and do a three-sided on this one. Three-sided is a little more harder, so you might be better off starting with a four-sided. Uh, when I say foresight, I'm talking about how you how you want the lead to sh be shaped, and you need to when you get towards the end, you want to get a little more pressure because you want it to be a be a uh, wedge. And you can see I've got that real thin right there, but it's not that thin. So I got that. So, so I'll go over to this side, and, and at this point, what you're wanting is you're wanting none of the wood to be round or none of the lead to be round that's exposed. I think I came up, yeah, I can, if you look, look at that. It's almost a perfect triangle. So now what I need to do is just, I'll, I'll, now I'll kind of move my uh, my knife down and I'll focus on that last little bit and just give it a little more pressure. Again, at this point with the lead, you got to be real careful. You'll break it. And I would not do a three-point. A four-point is a lot easier, because, but a three-point is what I'm kind of after for my drawing. So where am I? Oh, this this side needs. I've got shaved down to a to a blade, and I you even though I'm focusing on on the end to try and take off material. Oh, see, I broke it. See, but you can see I I got it too thin on the side. Like I said, three a three sided is pretty uh, difficult. Because you don't, because you're not taking a lot off on the end there. Okay, uh, let's see. Is this good? I think this is probably pretty good. It's not a, it's not a real sharp drawing point. You can take, if you have some, you can take a sanding block. Wait, let's see, and finish that last little bit. Oh yeah, see now that one came out real good. Let me wipe that off over here. It's short. It's shorter than I'd like, but you can see that came out pretty good. Okay, let me do. I'll do a four point. Okay, well I'll I'll fix that one later. But that's good. This is usable. Okay, so I'll do a four point on this one. That was a little ambitious. Um, I'll and I'll use an Exacto knife. So this with an Exacto, you can't put your thumb on there. Oh, I guess you could. Let's see them on the reality. I think my X-Acto knife is sharper than my knife knife. That was going easier. That's one advantage to using an X-Acto knife. And again, be careful that you don't you don't want to jam yourself in the uh, in the knuckle. I've done that. I had to go to the, not with not doing this, but using a knife. It's real easy to catch yourself right there. So you want to be careful. And I think it goes without saying always cut away from yourself. Um, okay, see that's a good. Uh, Okay, so let's, and again, on the wood, I'm just following the hexagon of the shape. If it's round, I, you can kind of work your way around. Okay, so there we got, okay, let's see. Not quite there yet. It's getting close. Close on that other side. And uh, you don't have to stick with the with the hexagon. That's not really uh, my thing. Is it gets you started off spaced out, so you're not uh, carving more on one side because the lead should be in the center. If the lead's not in the center, you're gonna have, it's gonna be harder than. 
but the lead, unless it's a really cheap pencil, lead should be pretty close to the center. And that helps you kind of hit it by uh, by starting off with a hexagonal. And when you get close, it'll kind of pull loose. See, like there, see it kind of flaked off. Okay, I'm close enough. We'll try We'll try it again. I'll do a four-pointed this side, or four-sided this time. And I'll, I'll, let me get a little bit of that off. There, that looks good. Okay, now I'll go the opposite side. I may have made that too thin. That's that's one problem too, is you can make it too thin. I haven't sharpened very many of these pencils, so I'm not used to it. Uh, okay. Let me do this side. Okay, this one came out a lot better. Oops, kind of butchered up that edge. But you can see there, this is kind of, I would consider this a successful pencil sharpened. So the, uh, you can kind of see the facets of it. It's a little bit fat on the top, but you can, if you draw with it, you know, you can, it'll, it'll kind of even out. And, and uh, I like it because you can do, you can shade easy and then you can draw and it'll, it'll kind of, as you use it, it'll kind of all even out. And, and a, 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 a point like this, that's that wedge will stay sharp, a lot sharper than a, uh, just something you would do in a pencil sharpener. You see how long that is. That's pretty long. It'd be hard to get a pencil sharpener that long. This is like a typical sharpened pencil. So you got more lead to work with and it doesn't get fat on you real thick. It stay, it keeps a more consistent line weight uh, longer, which is good. That's what you're, that's, I think that's what you're looking for um, when you're sharpening a drawing pencil. Anyway, okay, again, I'm Scott Sackett, um, illustrator of Heaven's Rejects and the Black Cricket. If you enjoyed this video, please take a second to subscribe. Watch my other videos about, um, I talk about how to draw comics the Marvel way. I talk about drawing. I talk about drawing books, drawing materials. Uh, if you have a comment, please uh, leave a comment below. If you have a critique, please feel free to leave a critique. Uh, if you do decide to do this, please be careful and do not injure yourself. Thank you very much, and, uh, and keep your eyes out for more videos. Goodbye.